Hello again. I'm going to be starting Found back up on page 187 at chapter 21. Not you too, Chip complained. I'm sorry, Jonah said. He bent over, bracing his hands against his knees, trying to pull more air into his lungs, a delayed reaction to all his frantic pedaling and running. As soon as he could, he looked back up at Chip. I'm not sure that's what happened. I'm not sure of anything anymore. But I think that's what happened, because it makes the most sense. The most sense? Chip repeated in amazement. That's the best explanation you can come up with? A time warp? You didn't see what I saw, Jonah said. The edge of his, of his vision were a little blurry even now, but this was a normal feeling. Oxygen deprivation, his mind automatically labeled it. He felt the way he did after he played an entire soccer game as midfielder, running up and down the field for a solid hour. He'd felt this way after the soccer game this morning. Oh geez, he thought. I played that soccer game and then I rode my bike like a maniac. No wonder I feel so dead. No wonder I'm seeing things. I mean, not seeing things. Seeing someone vanish. Or wait, maybe she wasn't really there in the first place? His thoughts got so tangled that his mind gave up trying to revise his memory of seeing Angela vanish. It had happened, period. Catherine, he gasped. When you said you saw the janitor disappear, I shouldn't have made fun of you. I didn't know. You believe me now? Catherine asked. Why? Comprehension dawned on her face. Angela disappeared, didn't she? And you saw it. Jonah nodded. I'll show you. He started to stumble over something. It was his own bike, where he dropped it in the middle of the sidewalk. He picked it up, and then it was nice to have the handlebars to lean on as he led Chip and Catherine through the parking lot over to the cluster of pine trees. He dropped his bike again by the curb. She was right here, he said, stepping into the pine needles. I saw her, and she took one step forward. He took a step, and she was gone. Jonah rocked back on his heels, stepping forward again. He felt nothing different in either place. There was no temperature change, no wind howling furiously around some time portal. In both spots, before his step and after, he just felt a gentle breeze, the sunshine warm on the back of his neck, the pine needle soft beneath his feet. Guess the time warp only wanted Angela, not you, Chip said mockingly, but there was an edge of fear in his voice. Or someone's protecting you, Catherine said. Jonah looked at, at his sister. She was in the middle of pulling her hair back, capturing it in a ponytail. Jonah was surprised to see how red her face was. She had a ring of sweat her, where her bike helmet had pressed against her head, and the sweat was trickling down her cheeks. He was amazed that she was willing to be seen in public like this. Didn't you notice, she began in an on, oddly strangled voice, how when those men were fighting, the cute janitor guy yelled out, Jonah, Chip, run! He didn't say my name. He didn't say Angela's. You think those guys were fighting over us? Chip asked. Why not you too? You're the babies from the plane, Catherine said. I'm not. Jonah thought about this. The fight and the fleeing had happened so fast, all he had were jumbled images in his head. But the janitor tackler had seemed to be trying to protect them. How did he know our names? He asked. Mine, I guess, from Mr. Reardon's office, but Chip's? He remembered something else, and he did recognize Angela. I don't know if you two heard, because you were out the window already, but he called her Angela Dupree, and he said, he said, it was such a struggle to remember, something like, we have wronged you. No, we have wronged you in time. We owe you. In time? Chip whispered. Catherine sat down on the curb, her elbows propped up on her knees, her face caught in her hands. That whole plain thing did kind of ruin Angela's life, she said. I mean, refusing to talk on the telephone, having everyone think she's crazy? Chip sat down beside Catherine. What does the janitor guy have to do with the plane, he asked. And who was the guy he was fighting with? What did he want to do with us? Jonah stiffened. Beware, he quoted. They're coming back to get you. That's what the letter said. That's who they were warning us about. He looked around frantically. What if the man tried again, some time when no one was around to protect them? Catherine shook her head, her ponytail flipping back and forth. Really, she said disgustedly, if the cute janitor wanted to warn you, he should have provided a few more details, names, dates, something you could go to the police with. 
The police would never believe us, Chip groaned. I don't even believe it. Jonah could feel the sweat rolling down his back, but it wasn't leftover sweat from all his biking and running. It was new sweat, panicky sweat, proof that his body thought he should be completely terrified. Well, here's what we need to do, Catherine said, tossing her head empathetically, her ponytail whipping out behind her. We need to call all the other kids on the survivors list again and see if they've had any experiences of some guy trying to catch them or some other guy trying to protect them. We need to gather some data. See if any of them have ever seen someone just vanish into thin air. And we need to warn them, but let them know what we know. But we don't know anything, Chip said. We know about the plane, Catherine said. We know where Angela thinks the plane came from. We know what the janitor boy looks like. We know what one of your letters means. Tallied up that way, Catherine's plan almost sounded reasonable. She sounded as calm as Mom always did, dealing with the crisis. One time, when Jonah was little, he dropped a glass and it had shattered on the kitchen floor. And Mom had been there immediately, telling him in her most soothing voice, Yes, Jonah, I see that there's glass all over the floor, and I see that you're barefoot, and it is a little bit scary. But if you stand there like a statue, I'll pick you up and you'll be fine, and then I'll sweep up all the glass. Jonah had escaped without a single cut. If Catherine could master that same voice now, he was willing to let her take control. All right, he said. Chip shrugged. Whatever. All three of them retrieved their bikes and began walking back toward the bike path. Chip and Catherine hadn't played a soccer game or pedaled quite as frantically as Jonah had earlier, but neither of them seemed any more eager than he was to speed home. They rode slowly, each of them stopping at various points to say, if there really is such a thing as time travel, or if we really are from the future, or if the plane was a time machine... None of them seemed capable of making a complete sentence, of following any of the ifs to a logical conclusion. That's because there aren't any logical conclusions, Jonah told himself. He'd read time travel books, he'd seen time travel movies, and they'd always seemed wrong to him. Couldn't the people just keep going back again and again and again, keep changing time until it turned out the way they wanted it to? And there was some paradox he remembered hearing about, something about a grandmother... Oh, yeah, time travel travel had to be impossible because, otherwise, you could go back in time and kill your own grandmother. But if you killed your own grandmother, then you wouldn't exist, so you couldn't go back in time, so your grandmother would be alive again. But then you would also exist again, so you could go back and kill your grandmother, but then you would never be born. Jonas had hurt just thinking about it. They reached Chip's house and actually parked their bikes neatly near the, in the driveway. Even though they'd ridden slowly, Jonah was still drenched with sweat. Hey, I'm really rank, he said. Unless you want me stinking up your whole basement, I'd better take a shower before we start calling people. Catherine sniffed. Um, me too, she said. She didn't have Mom's authoritative voice anymore. She just sounded embarrassed. Okay, Chip said, but hurry back. He sounded like he didn't want to be left alone, but he was too ashamed to say so. Too ashamed to say so. <laughs> Jonah and Catherine took their bikes to their own garage. You can have the shower in Mom and Dad's bathroom, Catherine said, not quite looking at him. This was a gift on her part, probably a sign that she felt sorry for him. Because Mom and Dad's bathroom was bigger and nicer, and the one between his and Catherine's room bigger and nicer than the one between him and Catherine's rooms. Usually, she dashed into the better bathroom ahead of him, slamming the door shut, jabbing the lock, and shrieking, Ha ha ha! Beat you! You snooze, you lose! Thanks, Jonah mumbled. He didn't care about where he took a shower right now. In the shower, he'd stood under the pounding spray for a long time after he'd soaked and rinsed off. The hot water felt good, even though Mom and Dad were always nagging about not wasting water and energy. You kids should be concerned about the future, Mom always said, because you're going to have to live there. Oh no, Jonah moaned. What was... was that what this is about? In so many of the time travel books and movies he's seen, people came back from the future to warn about global warming or stuff like that. <laughs> what if he and Jonah and the other kids were supposed to deliver some message about how people needed to make big changes now to save the world in the future? Lots of people were already talking about global warming, he said aloud even though he wasn't sure who he was talking to. Nobody's going to listen to me. Also, if this was an environmental thing, what were the two sides fighting over? 
Did the janitor just want him to stay here to deliver his message? Did the other guy want the world to end? Jonah wasn't enjoying his shower anymore. He shut off the water, stepped out, and pulled a towel from the rack. Distantly, he heard the phone ringing. Then it stopped ringing. Dad must have gotten up from watching the Ohio State game to answer it. Jonah knew Catherine would still be in the shower because she always took forever. Then she'd have to spend another eternity drying her hair. She'd be doing well to make it back to Chip's house before midnight. Jonah? It was Dad, shouting up the stairs. Chip's on the phone. He says it's urgent. Can you get the phone up there? Sure, Jonah said. He wrapped the towel around his waist and went for the phone in his parents' bedroom. Got it, Dad! Jonah yelled. He heard the click that meant his dad had hung up downstairs. Hello? They're gone, Chip said, his voice cracking. What's gone? The list on my computer, the survivor's list, the witnesses' list, the files where Catherine and I were keeping checklists about who said what. It all disappeared. But the rest of the computer is fine. How could that be? Chip's voice arced toward hysteria. Calm down, Jonah said. Maybe you just deleted something by mistake. Did you check the delete file? Not there. Didn't you have everything backed up? Silence. Evidently, Chip didn't. But you made printouts, Jonah reminded him. I left them at the library, Chip groaned. I didn't get them back from Angela before we climbed out the window. Did you pick them up? Did Catherine? Jonah thought about this. He could remember the papers lying on the table in front of Angela, right before the first man slammed against the door. What had happened to the lists after that? When he'd run around to the table to get to the window, had the breeze lifted the pages slightly into the air? After he'd climbed out the window and glanced back, had the papers been sliding across the table as the men jolted it from below? Why hadn't he paid more attention, and why hadn't he simply grabbed the papers as he ran? There wasn't time, Jonas said, his voice unnecessarily surly. Maybe if I call the library, Chip said desperately, maybe someone found them? Don't bother, Jonas said. They weren't there when we, I went back. He was sure of that detail. Do you think Angela took them? Chip asked. Jonah shrugged, forgetting that Chip couldn't see him. What good does that do us? Jonah said. He, wanted to spec he didn't want to speculate about where Angela might have gone with the papers. A new thought occurred to him. Doesn't Catherine still have all the pictures stored on her cell phone? She deleted them after we downloaded everything, Chip moaned. She said they took up too much space, and she was worried that your parents might see them because sometimes your mom borrows that phone. This was true. Mom had been having trouble with her own phone battery. Some of Chip's despair was beginning to effect, infect Jonah. Then we don't have anything left from those lists at all, Jonah said, his own voice edging toward panic. Nothing? I still have Janiela McCarthy's phone on my cell, Chip offered, but no one else's? I used our home phone for everyone else, Chip said. Catherine told me I was being mean, trying to rack up all those minutes on my cell. And you actually listened to her? Jonah wanted to scream. Instead, he squeezed his eyes shut. Stay calm, he ordered himself. Your parents, he began slowly. If they don't want to talk about you being adopted, do you think they might have deleted those files? Do you think if maybe you go ask them... My parents never look at my computer, Chip said bitterly. They don't care. The only people who knew about those files were you and Catherine and me. And I didn't tell anyone. Did you? Did Catherine? No, Jonah said automatically. But he still had his eyes squeezed shut, and it was as if he had his memories displayed on the backs of his eyelids. He could see his own hand sweeping across the page, writing out, All the information is on Chip's computer in the basement at his house. Oh no, Jonah said. His eyes sprang open again, and he caught a glimpse of his own stricken expression in his parents' dresser mirror. The note! The note I left for my parents when we went to the library, just in case something happened. Did they read it? Chip asked, horrified. You think they came over and erased my computer files? Would they do that? No, but Jonah took the phone and rushed to the hall to his own room. The note, was hit st the note was still hidden in the top drawer of his desk, right beside the mysterious letter, Beware, they're coming back to get you. He thought about the casual way Dad had shouted up the stairs about the phone call. Dad hadn't seen this note, and Mom was still out running errands. She hadn't seen it either. Then he remembered the man in the library, struggling under the table as Jonah scrambled out the window. 
Go, Jonah, hurry. And Jonah, I saw your note. You have to be careful. Careful where you leave anything that could be seen later. Anything that could be monitored. Oh no, Jonah moaned. It was one of them. Them who? But Jonah was peering sus suspiciously around his room. It looked like usual, the NBA poster a little crooked on the wall, the blue bedspread slightly rumpled, the closet door open a crack with his shoes half in and half out. It was all so familiar, but it had been invaded at least twice now that he knew of. The very air seemed to crackle with danger. Except, was it really dangerous right this minute? If people could just appear any anywhere they wanted, and he was still trying to get his mind around that idea. Why didn't someone just grab him now? Why hadn't they taken him back with the plane, or during any one of the thousands of seconds of his life since? Maybe time travel wasn't so easy. Be careful. Careful where you leave anything that could be seen later. Anything that could be monitored. Seen later. Monitored. Maybe the next word after that would have been later, too. Maybe, if time travel even existed, there were limits to it. Maybe it was something about the rotation of the earth, or sunspots, or something bizarre like that. So, anything written down was dangerous, because it could be seen at any time. And other things. Things that could be monitored were cell phone pictures and computer hard drives, and... Jonah gasped. Chip, I can't tell you anything right now. Not over the phone. Why not? Chip demanded. This is crazy. You're starting to sound like Angela. What if Angela's right? And that's the end of chapter 21.